Aerial scouts of the 2nd Battalion under Ukrainian Armed Forces 101st Brigade have intercepted Russian army soldiers who wanted to rotate in a wooded area near the village of Storitsa in Kharkiv region. As a result of artillery and drone strikes, most of the invaders in the area were killed. Although the surviving servicemen tried to evacuate their fellow soldiers from the area with a stretcher, they themselves became targets of the drones. With this, the movement in the position was blocked and the arrival of new soldiers in the area was prevented. The commander of the Special Rapid Response Unit, Akhmat, Major General Apti Alodinov, responded harshly to questions from Komsomolskaya Pravda journalist Ivan Pankin, calling him a Chechenophobe and Shaitan. The questions concerned recent events in the Kursk region, as well as the inter-ethnic conflict in Anapa, which caused Alodinov's indignation and accusations of inciting inter-ethnic hatred. The incident occurred after the publication of experts from an interview that Alodinov gave on the air of Komsomolskaya Pravda radio. During the broadcast, Pankin asked the Akhmat commander questions about the actions of his unit during the Ukrainian armed forces invasion of the Kursk region and about the notorious fight between Russians and Chechens in Anapa. These topics caused an extremely negative reaction from Alodinov. The Major General did not mince words, called Pankin a devil and a shaitan, claiming that the journalist represents the interests of forces seeking to destroy Russia from within. Alodinov also accused Pankin of being biased against Chechens, claiming that his main enemies were not Ukraine or NATO, but representatives of the Chechen people. According to Alodinov, the journalist allegedly deliberately provoked him and tried to incite inter-ethnic hatred during the conversation. The Akhmat commander expressed confidence that such questions and public discussions are aimed at undermining the unity of Russia and creating tensions between the various peoples living in the country. He called for a more careful and respectful attitude to issues of inter-ethnic relations, emphasizing that his unit continues to serve Russia and protect its interests. The questions about the conflict in Anapa that were raised in the interview concerned a fight in one of the city's cafes. A video of the incident was circulated online on September the 3rd, showing several men attacking two others. The conflict allegedly began after one of the Chechens persistently tried to get the phone number of a girl who was relaxing with the group. Alodinov, commenting on the incident, said that the events were distorted and that the girl allegedly insulted the Chechens on ethnic grounds and that the instigators of the fight were other men, not natives of Chechnya. However, journalist Ivan Pankin expressed disappointment with Alodinov's position, especially after his statements about the fight in Anapa. The war correspondent noted that his questions were aimed at clarifying the situation, not at provocation. Pankin also added that his goal was to discuss important issues related to the actions of Akhmat and inter-ethnic relations in the country and not to incite conflict. Alodinov commands the Chechen Akhmat Special Forces Unit, a regiment named after the late Chechen President Akhmat Kadyrov, who was assassinated over 20 years ago. The unit is considered to be the private army of his son and current head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadyrov, although it's meanwhile been integrated into the Russian armed forces. A portrait of Kadyrov's father adorns the special unit's flag that Alodinov positions himself in front of as he expresses his surprise over the failure of Russian forces to drive Ukraine back 
Since the beginning of Ukraine's Kursk incursion, Alodinov has become one of Russia's most visible war commentators. He posts videos and texts on Telegram every day for his nearly 300,000 followers. Media agencies cite him and talk shows invite him on as their guest. For his service, the Russian government awarded Alodinov the title of Hero of Russia. In April 2024, he was additionally named the deputy head of the main military political directorate of the Russian Armed Forces, where he shares responsibility for organizing military political propaganda and agitation. Alodinov's contacts in the Chechen elite and his role commanding the Akhmat Special Forces, for which he recruits volunteers from across Russia, make him particularly well-positioned to appeal to various targeted audiences. According to Adam Ashab, an expert of the Caucasus region and consultant at the integration support agency RAA Brandenburg, it's also possible that Alodinov is meant to fill the gap left by the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin. In 2023, presumably following a spat with the Kremlin, the head of the Wagner Group, a private military, had marched his mercenaries toward Moscow. Shortly after he died in a plane crash, Moscow lost Prigozhin, and it looks like they need a new Prigozhin, Ashab said. The United States, on the eve of a full-scale invasion, was sure that Ukraine would lose. The West assumed that Volodymyr Zelensky would be killed by the Russians, so they asked the Ukrainian president to record a video statement. The previous Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitro Kuleba, who held this post until September 2024, spoke about this in Olga Koshalenko's project USA-UA Secret White House Files. Kuleba said that at a conference in Munich, Vice President Kamala Harris advised Zelensky to prepare the creation of a government in exile, as well as to look for some military solutions to prepare Ukraine for guerrilla warfare. The diplomat recalled that in the last days of February before the invasion, he was advised not to return to Kyiv. One person, a great friend of Ukraine, sent me a message, and when I said that I was returning, he said, Zelensky needs to record a video testament, the former minister recalled. In fact, on the first day of the full-scale war, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made a short address to Ukrainians at around 7 in the morning. This address lasted 67 seconds, in which the country's leader confirmed the start of a full-scale war with Russia. He called on Ukrainians to be resilient and emphasized that the country was ready to fight. The president also called for no panic and to trust the armed forces of Ukraine, reported on a conversation with US President Joe Biden about forming a broad anti-Putin coalition and promised to stay in touch all the time and inform society about the course of the events. Immediately after the invasion began, queues began to form at military registration and enlistment offices and territorial defense units across the country. At the same time, Ukrainians self-organized, defending their hometowns and villages. In his subsequent speeches, the president emphasized that Ukrainians did not surrender and did not raise a white flag. This was a symbol of the country's unity and determination in confronting the aggressor. The president also expressed confidence in Ukraine's victory and called on citizens to fight for every next day. This became the key idea of resistance and invincibility for the entire country. Since then, Zelensky has made a traditional address to Ukrainians every evening.